Hi guys, it's Kara, and I'm here to talk to you about type 1 diabetes. Now, as a di disclaimer, I just wanted to say that whatever I'm discussing right now is just general diabetes education and things that are specific to me as well. Now, if you know someone who is type 1 diabetic, or if you are a type 1 diabetic, I just like to let you know that diabetes is very individual. So what works for me may not work for someone else, and if you're looking to help someone with type 1 diabetes or get more information about type 1 diabetes, I'll put links below and um, just talk to the physician and get information because everyone's different. So, just wanted to put that out there. Now, the reason for this video is because a lot of people are aware of diabetes, but they're more or less aware of type 1 and type 2 but think of everything that's regarding type 2. So I just wanted to clarify the differences between the two and what type 1 diabetes really means. Now technically, um, if you see me looking down, I have notes. I wanted to give accurate information that I've gotten from my doctor, so I'm not like just making things up. Um, type 1 diabetes is the most severe form of diabetes. Uh, type 1 is an insulin-dependent diabetic. Type 2 is someone who has insulin resistance. So, to make it a little bit easier for you, type 1 diabetics, they do not produce insulin on their own. They must inject insulin by a syringe or an insulin pump every day. Type 2 diabetics, they're controlled by diet, exercise, and sometimes they take pills and insulin too, but it's not as severe, it's not as much, and type 2 diabetes is the kind that is preventable. Type 1 diabetes is not. Type 1 diabetes is something that is either hereditary or it's, it's kind of weird because, like for instance, I have no one in my family that's diabetic, and I got diabetes at age 7. So prior to this, it wasn't in the family. So it, it, with me it was weird because they said it was something, maybe my body was going through something and uh, I got it. Uh, diabetes for type 1 is an autoimmune disease. So with that being said, there's no cure, there's no way to reverse it. If you have it, you're stuck with it. <laughs> and that sounds kind of mean, but it's the truth. Um, there are tests in other countries and, and therapies and other ways that are still being tested, but they aren't anything that is confirmed to reverse diabetes. But moving forward, as far as type 1 diabetes goes, um, it, it, it attacks your autoimmune uh, system and your pancreas will not produce insulin. Everyone has a pancreas with insulin in their body that lasts them for a lifetime, whereas I do not. I um, have to give myself shots every day. I take two different types of insulin. One is a long-acting insulin that I inject every morning. That's supposed to last 24 hours. Then I have a fast-acting insulin that I inject whenever I have a high blood sugar or if I eat. Now, the two of those are very different and you do not want to mix the two up because that can be pretty bad as well. Um, I also have to have a strict diet and I have to just be calm. Uh, type 1 diabetes, anything and everything can affect it. Uh, emotions, uh, if you're sick, stress, <laughs> stress is a big one. Um, you know, what you do as far as your physical activity, what you eat, different types of foods. Now, just because you have diabetes doesn't mean you can't have sugar, you can't have, you know, cake or candy. Now, I choose not to. Um, that is my preference because I am very brittle. Uh, anything I eat uh, can affect me one way one day, and then like a year later, it can affect me differently. So I stick to foods that are much more healthier, um, vegetables, proteins, low fat, um, low carb, but that's what works for me. Diabetics, you know, there's people who eat normally and they just give themselves insulin to cover for it, but I'm not comfortable with that. Now, moving on about type 1 diabetes. Every day, 
not only do I test my sugar, I have to give myself shots and I have to, you know, count carbs, I have to put ratios of carbs to insulin, so it's a science. <laughs> so every day I have to look at what I'm eating, calculate how much insulin it is, then on top of that, figure out what my blood sugar is. So what is blood sugar? Blood sugar is glucose measured within your body, in your bloodstream that comes from foods, <laughs> it comes from stress, it, you know, everything you put into your body affects your blood sugar, medications, um, food, uh, all the things I've mentioned before about stress and emotions. I mean, even excitement, I can be happy and my blood sugar can go out of control. So I test my blood sugar. First, let me just say how it is to be me. I wake up every day and I check my sugar. Depending on that, if it's normal, good. <laughs> if it's not, I give myself insulin or I give myself food. I take my long acting insulin like I told you about and then go about my day. I also test my sugar whenever I'm feeling symptomatic, before meals, before bed, sometimes before I leave and go in my car. If I'm driving far, I want to know what my blood sugar is. For a type 1 diabetic, normal blood sugar varies depending on the person, but for me, it should be anywhere between 80 and 120, 130. Um, unfortunately, I have not managed to have a balance between that. so. To me, anything in the 100s is perfect, but um, so anything under the 80 is when you're low, and low blood sugar is when you have to eat, and that is something with sugar, mostly orange juice or they have glucose tablets or glucose gels or glucose powders, something with sugar, soda, and you want to follow it with a protein, and uh, protein can be peanut butter. Peanut butter is also really good. Um, so when you're low, you eat, you wait 15-20 minutes, check your sugar again. And then, if it's rising and it's going up, you're good. If it's not, if it hasn't moved much, then that's when you kind of have to correct a little bit more. And it is, a, it is like a game in its own because a lot of diabetics, including me, overcorrect for their lows because sometimes what you're eating doesn't kick in fast like it should be and you think you're dropping or you're not coming up and you end up eating more and then you're high or higher than what it should be. So anything say over the 130 to 120, so, you know, anything around that could be considered low depending, um, or I'm sorry, high. <laughs> I'm ugh, all confused. So when you're high, depending on what it is, you have a sliding scale. So if you're over a certain marker, you give yourself insulin. So, on a bad day, if I'm low and high, I could check my sugar over 10 times a day. And a lot of diabetics test, you know, four to five times a day, depending on how controlled you are. So, high blood sugar is just as dangerous as low blood sugar, but that's the one that's a little bit more trickier because you have to inject insulin and it has to register to your body to lower it. For me, personally, high blood sugar comes, it takes a while for it to come down, and it's just, it's just terrible. And diabetes isn't terrible, because if I wasn't diabetic, I wouldn't be the person who I am now. So I'm kind of happy I'm diabetic, because it's made me stronger. Um, a little backstory, I got diabetes when I was t uh, seven. Um... Apparently, I was diabetic for a while without noticing it. Again, like I said, nobody in my family was diabetic, so there was no concern. I was kind of on the heavier side for my age, but prior to that, I dropped a lot of weight, which we thought was, you know, good because, hey, you know, we thought that I was eating healthier and being more active, but that wasn't the case. My blood sugar got so high that... I went into a diabetic coma. I was in the coma for several days. It had gotten so bad that my organs were not performing normally, they were failing. Um, and they suggested that I get removed from all the machines and just see how I handled disconnected. Well, obviously I'm here right now and I woke up, so at, from age seven, I had to grow up. 
I was told that I had a disease that I could die from, that I couldn't be like all my friends, and I couldn't eat the things that my friends were eating. I had to get shots, I had to test my sugar, and at age seven, that's pretty scary. Um, but I thought it was cool, I thought it was different, and um, you know, I handled it well. But because of that, I had to mature, I had to just deal with things in life that were a lot differently. So, as much as I rant about my diabetes or, you know, how frustrated I am, it's who I am, and I'm happy that I have diabetes in the sense that it's, I, I've gone through things that a lot of people haven't, and it's made me stronger. I appreciate things differently. Now, there was a question that I do remember, and um, somebody asked if I hate type 2 diabetics, and um, no, I don't hate type 2 diabetics. I, um, I feel like, you know, regardless of the type that you have, you do have a bond. Um, they sometimes have things a little bit differently than me and vice versa. So the biggest question that this person says is uh, putting type 1 or type 2 aside, is this a disease that is a result of influence by too much sugar consumption or the lack of water earlier in life? And they wanted to know if it's preventable. No. Type 1 diabetes you cannot prevent. I mean, if you're predisposed to diabetes, as in like your parents are diabetic, now that's something you will watch. You'll get tested often and, um, you know, you're either going to get it or you won't and you sometimes don't know when you're going to get it, but it's going to happen majority of the time. So no, type 1 diabetes you cannot prevent. Type 2 diabetes you can by your health, your activity, your diet, um, that all could be preventable. I asked about blood circulation is a common issue and uh, does the circulation complications depend on the type or dieting habits? Yes. Um, to a degree. Type 1 diabetics, we are, we are going to be prone to so many complications. Vision, um, circulation, um, just a boatload of things, but it depends on how controlled you are. So um, if you manage your diabetes well, then your chances for these um, complications are lower. Now, there are people who are perfect diabetics who happen to just have complications. So it's complicated, but if you eat right, you give yourself your proper amount of insulin and activities and you, you know, try to take care of your health, the risk of complications is not as high. Um, we'll do an emergency situation. Well, if you know a diabetic and they're acting strange, if they're alert, you ask them to test their sugar. People <laughs> so many times have said, we got to give them something to eat. No. You do not want to do that because if their blood sugar is high, you giving them more sugar will cause it to go up higher and that can be very dangerous. So you tell the person to check their sugar. If they can't check their sugar, then you're going to have to. Now, if you do not know what to do in that situation, you might want to see if they can talk you through it. Um, first and foremost, test their sugar. Um, now, if they are low, you want to give them something liquid, nothing to chew. It's harder for diabetics to chew when they're low sometimes, especially if it's an emergency. Plus, orange juice or soda reacts to the system much faster. It comes in to you and brings you up quicker. If the person is high, then they need insulin. If they can't do it, if you're not comfortable with giving them a shot, then Call 911. In both situations, if the person seems like they're not doing good, even if you're scared, it's better to call 911. Test their sugar, figure out what to do, if it's low or high, and then call 911. All right. Um, so somebody wanted to know what that they can do for their family members to, I guess, have better knowledge themselves. First and foremost, the internet has so much information. Just Google it and look at the American Diabetes Association website, which has a ton of resources. Go on there and research. Um, if it's like a family member as in a child, 
talk to their doctor. There are diabetic educators that you and whoever your loved one is can go to and they can sit and teach you things. I mean, um, look it up online, talk to the doctor, um, get to know the person and, the, and how they feel. Um, especially if it's a parent, you know, they're older, you know, ask them, how do you do this? How do you feel? When it comes down to it, emergency situations could become fatal, you know, if not handled in a timely manner or correctly. So definitely just get involved. Uh, there are people on YouTube as well that talk about diabetes. There are plenty of resources out there as far as um, just learning. So, but I just wanted to let you know that type 1 diabetes is something that you get as a child or you get it because your pancreas is not creating insulin so you have to re you have to rely on injections because if I didn't give myself insulin I could die not right away but if I did not have insulin for a certain amount of time it can lead to coma and death so that is severe type 2 you exercise you eat you watch your diet you watch your health and um, you know, some people have insulin pills and injections and eventually go off of it. So that's not as severe. You know, I can have risk for blindness. I can have, like, risks of having, like, limbs, <laughs> limbs amputated, toes amputated. You know, I can have risks of um, heart disease and other things. Whereas type 2 diabetes isn't like that. Type 2 diabetes is because of either it's hereditary or, you know, poor health or diet. Sometimes people just, at a certain age, just become resistant to the insulin that they're receiving. Again, type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes, even though it's standard across the board, everyone is individual. So, I just wanted to explain that. Now, if you wanted to know more about it and you had other questions about me and my diabetes, leave a comment below. I'd be more than happy to make another video regarding diabetes. I can go into my coma story. I can go into how I once was on an insulin pump and the problems I had with that. I can go into, you know, just just other things to provide more awareness for type 1 diabetes. I think if people knew really what type 1 diabetes is and what to do and how to handle it and, you know, just recognize the difference between the two, then there won't be so much confusion. And of course, I'm rambling, and um, I just want to thank you guys for watching my video. Um, I'm going to link other diabetic resources down below, and uh, just go ahead and do some research. Um, you know, you can never know too much because everything keeps changing. And hey, if you're a friend of mine, you should know what to do. You should be able to tell me, Kara, check your sugar. Care, did you eat enough because you're looking kind of, you know, sick, you know, test your sugar, are you low? Not that, you know, I don't know what to do, but it's, it's nice to know that the people who are around you, friends, whether they're close or acquaintances, just o are aware of this disease because it is something very serious. But I just want to thank you guys for watching, and again, like, comment below ask me questions. I'll make another video. I mean, I got a camera for this, so I plan on using it, and I love talking about my diabetes and diabetes alone. But this is a short and sweet version, not that it's very short, and, um, you know, I just wanted to thank you guys for uh, hanging in there with me, and I hope you all have a nice evening.